our next speaker, Dr. Jerry Marks, who's been a longtime friend of our of our program and collaborator with us, and has come down a number of years to speak at our annual meeting that Jeff Jacobs hosts down there. Um, Jerry is an associate professor of pediatrics at the Harvard School of Medicine and a senior associate in cardiology at Boston Children's Hospital. And uh, while he may no longer be six foot five, he's certainly a giant in the field of advanced imaging in our field. Uh, thank you very much, Gary. Um, I couldn't pick out a specific innovator because there's so many in imaging and congenital heart disease. But I thought I'd give you my perspective as I traveled through the innovations that occurred. If you look at the left hand of the screen, you'll see an M mode echocardiogram. My first experience with this was uh, when I was at UCLA as a medical student. It was in a dark, quiet room, and there was this huge machine with an oscilloscope displaying a singular dimension of a picture over time. They told me it was a mitral valve. Um, and this is an uh, ammo from an article from one of the great innovators, uh, Dick Pop, in 1975. In 1976, I moved to Boston to start my residency and fellowship at Children's Hospital. The already I, I, uh, mentioned Roberta Williams, a great innovator, had just written a book on MO echocardiography detailing the ability to make certain diagnosis in congenital heart disease. I remember as a fellow having to spend many hours flipping through long strips of paper to make inferences about congenital heart disease. Then one day, around 1980, three top-notch innovators, Fred Bierman, Steve Sanders, and Roberta Williams, as Norm already alluded to, well, they were pushing this huge, gigantic machine with this ultrasound probe that would wobble back and forth, Gil remembers. They took the machine to a small baby. The probe was so big, the only place it would fit was in the baby's abdomen. Lo and behold, you could see a moving image of the heart in two dimensions. It was absolutely extraordinary. This innovation was so spectacular that many great innovators around the country were readily applying this technology to congenital heart disease. I don't want to exclude any innovators, but I want to name a few because you'll understand the ubiquitous nature of this great innovation. There was Dick Meyer in Cincinnati, Norm Silverman in San Francisco, Hugh Allen, Stan Goldberg, David Son in Arizona, Jim Huda, Howard Good Gazelle in Texas, and Jeff Smallhorn in London. It was a gold mine in non-invasive imaging. Perhaps the true translational effort going from research to the clinical arena was by the sensational combination of Dr. Liv Halley and Bjorn Angelson, who wrote their first classic textbook in 1982 on Doppler ultrasound in cardiology. These two investigators explored the application of continuous wave Doppler to make measurements of pressure gradients across a stenotic valve. I thought, and all of us thought, this was just incredible. I left my fellowship and I had the opportunity to go to the University of Arizona where Stan Goldberg was applying the principles of Doppler physics to analyze the cardiac flow in the normal and abnormal state. Stan and his co-workers wrote the first book on Doppler echocardiography uh, concentrating on the application in congenital heart disease. As time progressed, as you can see in the moving pictures in the center, Doppler came along and immediately normal disturbed flows could be presented on the ultrasound screen in real time in color. I remember in 1985 going to a national meeting where there were many abstracts on Doppler. The majority were presented by David Son and Jeff Stevenson, a great innovator from Seattle. Some crazy person thought about putting an ultrasound probe in the esophagus of a patient to get better visualization of the heart. This new concept, transesophageal echo, took off like a rocket ship in the 1990s. Early on, it was all for adults, and then Sam Ritter from NIU reported the use of a probe that could be used, placed in the esophagus of small infants and babies. Norm Silverman, 
probably one of the great innovators of our time, prolifically described the use of TE at surgery, which has become a mainstay in congenital heart surgery. The beloved Charlie Kleinman in 1980 published the first manuscript on fetal echocardiography. Imagine one could accurately diagnose congenital heart defects as early as 16 weeks gestation. Wayne Turetsky and colleagues have led the way in interventional procedures for critical aortic stenosis of the newborn, of the fetus. The procedure of placing a balloon catheter across the aortic valve in the utero, in utero baby is unconditionally dependent on cardiac imaging. Some even crazier innovators have created images of the heart as they truly exist in three dimensions. Imagine that. In my first uh, shot at this, which I thought was 15 minutes, I was going to expound on how major innovations in transducer and computer technology now allow for spectacular views of the heart in three dimensions almost instantaneously. Quickly, other innovations. Magnetic resonance image in the heart is in, is in essence truly innovating for the care and evaluation of the adult patient with congenital heart disease. Ultra-fast CT allows for optimal visualization of the great vessels and tracheal bronchial tree in the smallest of babies. The acquisition is done in seconds with minimal radiation. So you want innovation? What if you could create a 3D model of the heart and then in virtual reality operate on the heart model before going to the operating room? In the center is a 3D model from an MRI of a patient with heterotaxy syndrome, double outlet, right ventricle, and complete AV canal from which our surgeons created the pathway from the LV to the aorta before going on to the operating room. Gary, thank you very much for allowing me to share this experience with you.